Today I'm at a location I visited late last year. I'm here for two reasons. The first reason is I want to revisit a missed opportunity or two from the last trip that I made here. I also want to try out a new filter I've been sent. It's a black mist filter. Or perhaps more accurately, it's a combined variable ND and black mist filter. More on that later. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you do and you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm near the town of Alcoy and I was here late last year photographing, I don't know if you can see it, this thing behind me. Um, and I've come back here not to photograph this again. Uh, I'm going to come back actually in the autumn because we're likely to get some nice autumn colours around here. Um, no, I've actually come here because further down this walk there's some old abandoned derelict factories and looking back at the video I shot here last time I had a quick look at them but I think there were some opportunities for photography there that I missed and I've got this new filter it's a combined variable ND and black mist filter that KNF Concept have sent me and I think this might be an ideal opportunity to try it out and get some interesting effects so uh, We'll check up on that a little bit later. Last time I was here, there was almost no water. Bit of a bonus, this. Well, that's kind of put a bit of a crimp in my plans. They're all barricaded off. They're obviously doing some works here. I don't know if they're demolishing them or whether they're trying to make them safe or what they're doing, but I can't go in. Okay, so plans kind of went awry when I came here last time, which was only, I don't know, November, maybe last year. You could go into the old factory buildings and it looked like there was some opportunities for some nice black and white in there with kind of the shapes of, you know, the supporting structures and the light coming in. But now they've obviously closed it off. I'm assuming maybe it's become dangerous. I wanted to go in there because I've got this new filter that I mentioned earlier. Um, which KNF Concept have sent me. Now fortunately I've got a couple of other options to test this out today so I'll be using those. But first just a, a quick word about what this filter is and why I picked this particular location to come to and then what my backup plan is. So this is a variable ND and a black mist diffuser filter combined. Now this is basically the kind of filter that would work very well for video. Um, the variable ND means you can maintain the optimum uh, uh, shutter speed for natural movement in video. And I did a whole video where I talked about um, variable ND filters and what they're really good for. I'll stick a link to that up there now if you haven't seen it. This is basically ND2 to ND32, so that's one stop to five stops, I think. What this also is, is a black mist diffusion filter. So if you look at it very closely in the right light, and I can't show you it now, but I'll film something you know, back at home to show you, there's actually little tiny black specks uh, embedded into the glass of the filter and what that does is diffuses the light coming through. Now for video purposes what that gives you is that soft dreamy cinematic effect around the highlights. It softens hard edges where highlights are coming through. Um, so combining it with a variable ND makes this a really really useful filter for video but I wanted to know if you could use it for stills photography and I thought inside a building where you've got dark inside and then light coming in from outside would be a great opportunity to test this because basically you could uh, see how it softens the highlights coming through. The other places that I thought this would be useful was in woodland. Again, if you've got light coming through, you know, into dark woodland, but because it's also a, a, an an ND filter you might not want that because you might not want the uh, 
the, the slower shutter speeds or the slower exposure times that a variable ND or an ND filter is going to give you. And the other thing I thought it would be really useful for might be for waterfalls because you can use the variable ND part to get the, you know, the nice exposure time to you know, create that sense of movement and smoothness in the water. Plus, the diffusion part of it might give the, the water a nice soft glow, particularly against a darker background. Now, fortunately, today there's quite a big waterfall that I spotted. I mean, big for here. So I think there's a possibility to go and test this filter out on the waterfall, and then I'm going to go on to another location to test it out in that sort of indoor-outdoor kind of approach. Okay, so I've set up on this little bridge. I've got a, quite a nice view of these waterfalls. I've got my 11 to 22 lens on, with an insect on it at the minute, just blowing it off. Uh, that's actually at 22 mil. And I've also got on the uh, variable ND and black mist filter. So the variable ND is gonna let me slow my exposure time down to get that smooth water and I'm going to aim for probably a quarter of a second. The black mist element actually should diffuse the highlights, so it should give a nice glow to the water. Now I'm thinking that might look particularly good in black and white, so I'm going to set my picture profile to black and white so I can see what it looks like. Might also benefit from a one-to-one -one crop. We'll just preview that just to get an idea. come out to my alternative location it's the Via Verde de Alcoy um, so that's the greenway or the green route and I've come here because of the old railway tunnels I can go in the tunnel near to the end looking out and I can test out how the uh, black mist diffusion filter copes or, or affects you know bright light coming into a dark environment how it softens the highlights might make for an interesting effect So it occurs to me, when I did the waterfall shots, I didn't do any photos without the black mist filter on for comparison. Just take my hat off, don't need it in here. So I'm going to rectify that now. I'm going to do a couple of shots in here. Again, this is almost certainly going to be uh, black and white, exposed to keep detail in the highlights in the background, which is 1 50th of a second without the filter on. Take that shot now. So I'm going to shoot some video now, um, first without the uh, filter on and then I'm going to put the filter on to see what effect it has and then I'm going to do some shots with the filter on. So I've got it running some video now, um, fairly dark, 
probably too dark actually let's just bump it up a little bit I mean the video is not going to have the dynamic range of the image so the highlights are going to be blown out I just want to see the effect of the myth black mist filter on the highlights in video so I'll screw that on now and see what it looks like and show you the difference and then we'll look at shooting some images okay so I've got the filter on now and uh, still running the video and I'm just going to play around with the exposure by darkening it right down with the variable ND and then brightening it back up again and then it's time to think about shooting some images up to the other end of the tunnel and there's a bit here where obviously there's water come through so the floor's all wet I'm thinking that might be quite cool particularly for another idea I've got for a similar image so um, I'm just going to shoot this with the uh, black mist filter on idea is to uh, take a shot with a 10 second timer, run into the frame, try and get myself small but kind of silhouetted in the frame. I think what I need to do is head for home and have a look and see how the black mist filter has affected both the video and the photos. So I'm going to wrap this video up in the office when I've had a chance to look at it. So I'll see you there pretty much now. I'm back at home, I've got the video and the photos loaded up and I've had a quick look at them. And I've got to be honest, viewing this on YouTube, the effects of the black mist filter might be easy to miss. It's pretty subtle, but then you'd want it to be. The images that I shot of the waterfall, I don't have anything to compare them to, but I did notice when I opened even the raw file and started processing them that the water did seem to have quite a pop to it. It seemed to stand out more than you know other waterfall images that I've shot. Now that could have just been a factor of the light and those particular waterfalls. But uh, I also think that the black mist filter was playing a part in just giving a glow to the highlights, which is obviously the water. Moving on into the tunnels, and if you look at the video clips that I shot uh, without the filter and with, I think you can see how the transition between the blown out highlights in the video at the end of the tunnel uh, and the darkness in the tunnel seem to seem to blend more. There's kind of a glow around the transition, which wasn't there without the filter. And if I look at the two images that I did a direct comparison on, now I must admit, unfortunately, I did manage to somehow uh, just jog the composition slightly between the two images, but the image shot with the black mist filter Again, the transition between the highlights uh, outside the tunnel and the dark 
darker areas inside seem smoother there's just that glow around there and I should say processing wise I processed the uh, the first image the one without the black mist filter and just copied the settings onto the second one the only difference between the two images apart from the black mist filter being fitted is that I had to double the exposure time on the second image because the black mist filter at its minimum variable ND setting was one stop difference and I do think the later images perhaps in particular the one where I ran into the scene to create a silhouette which I did do about 10 times before I got it <laughs> the way I wanted it. But I think that one in particular, the, the effect of the black mist filter kind of softened all the edges and just gives it a, a feel that probably wouldn't have been there without that filter in place. In conclusion, is this a good filter? For video, I would say yes. It's a very well-made filter. All the stuff from k &F Concepts that I've had has been very well made, particularly filters. And um, for video, it's fantastically useful if you want that cinematic, dreamy, soft effect, and you want to be able to control your exposure with a variable ND filter. It combines the two in one, very, very easy to fit and use. And of course, if you're not stacking filters, you're not running the risk of vignetting and that kind of thing. For stills photography, or for landscape photography in particular, it's probably, not going to be useful as much or as often but there will be times when it will offer additional creative options that you perhaps wouldn't have otherwise and i like that kind of thing the ability to do something a little bit different as i did in this one so i think it's a useful filter to have for photographers looking to you know perhaps extend their creative possibilities and Certainly for other types of photography, I can see it being very useful. Thank you to KNF Concept for sending it through to me. As always, when I do the project reviews, there will be some links in the video description if you want to look at the product further, if you want to consider buying the product. Uh, and there may even be some discounts available through those links as well. You'll have to check and see. So that's it. I'm going to wrap it up now. As uh, always, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, like, shares and comments are all really appreciated and really helpful. If you've enjoyed this video and you're new here and you want to see what else I get up to, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. And as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, so thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.